People with AIDS are supposed to die anytime. There is no nothing which can be done for them. They are isolated like uh, somebody who wears leprosy. We've been heard from the radios that there is a medicine for that disease, that true. I mean, you can be healed from that medicine. Why, uh, why is it uh, that the drug itself is very expensive since it is likely to save you? the lives of many people. Maybe those who have good money, they mm. can manage to buy them. But for those, I think, well, they will money. die. For those who have got no money, they will die. So why introduce antiretroviral therapy? Because our doctors are treating opportunistic diseases, which means we have patients coming back time and time again, and we end up burying all of them. As a medical organization, we are here to treat them. Drugs are available, but because they are so expensive, they're for the most part inaccessible. But everybody has the right to health care, and that's why, in the right conditions, we want to introduce ART to Malawi. We want to be able to treat patients. It's important to understand that when we started treating HIV back in the early 2000s, it really was an emergency situation. Everyone was dying, and we had to institute treatments as best we could, just to get the mortality down. But 10 years on, and when we saw at the beginning of 2013 that we were treating 27,000 patients, we felt that we needed to conduct an assessment of our work. How many patients require treatment? How many of them were treated by MSF? How many people were missing? Was the virus being transmitted in the area as fast as at the beginning of the 1990s? It's time for an assessment. In some cases, MSF knows there's a need, but we can't actually quantify it. Well, not with any degree of precision. But we go ahead anyway. And now the program's huge, but we don't have any real indicators on what's been achieved. The program has undergone lots of operational adjustments. We've instituted decentralized treatment and task shifting to give more responsibility for patient care to less qualified staff. We want to assess the program as it is today. Are the results satisfactory? Do our patients have good outcomes? And this is where the idea of the survey came from. We work in cooperation with Epicentre, who is tasked with implementing it. Conducted by Epicentre, the survey is already remarkable for its scope. Over 100 employees will need four months to survey 4,000 households and interview some 8,000 people. Teams go to the villages every morning and randomly select 25 homes. Yeah. You go and do the introductions. As soon as a head of household gives permission for the survey, all adults present are interviewed personally using the questionnaire. 
Quand on démarre ce genre d'enquête, on se demande euh, qu'est-ce qui va se passer. Quand on initie ce genre de survey, nous nous demandons comment ça va aller. Et des gens qui les Will people who see nurses and other staff knocking on all the doors and proposing HIV tests want to participate? Well, over 90% took part in the 2013 survey. Over 90% of the population has accepted to participate in this study. This shows not only how the population's attitude to HIV has evolved, but also that there is less stigma in an area where close to 20% of the population is infected and sick. Du sentiment de stigmatisation dans ces dans ces zones où près de 20% de la population est malade et infectée. The survey has to a certain extent modified the way we assess our projects. Instead of just focusing on the patients we treat, we looked at the population we're supposed to treat. Cette enquête est novatrice. This survey is innovative because it's a community survey. There have been other ones, but this one goes further. Like the CHIP survey, they're usually cluster sample, demographic, and health studies. They're completely anonymous and don't go into any detail. In the case of the CHIP survey, though, HIV-positive individuals have received treatment. We know who they are and so on. But we go much further than just prevalence study and look at the programmatic data. It's really important to measure ART coverage and the percentage of patients who are undetectable. These kinds of data data are essential to national health programs. For the first time in this type of survey, a point-of-care diagnostic machine is brought to each area to determine patient CD4 counts, the indicator of the level of destruction by the virus of the body's defense cells. All individuals testing HIV positive provide blood samples for further tests but their CD4 count is measured there and then using the diagnostic machine. There's been huge progress in the past few years in our understanding of HIV, and particularly how to prevent it. Recent studies from around the world show that someone who takes their treatment properly and who no longer has the virus in their blood no longer transmits the virus. So the objective is to measure the proportion of people within a population who have an undetectable viral load, the people who are infected but who no longer have the virus present in their blood and therefore aren't at risk of transmitting the virus. Once we have this data, obviously we want to measure HIV transmission. Laboratories in the U.S. have developed new tests called incidence tests. They allow us to evaluate relatively easily what we call incidence, meaning HIV transmission at a given time. These new tests cannot be done on site at the point of care. So every evening during the survey, blood samples from HIV-positive individuals are brought to the base in Chiradzulu. The plasma is extracted, logged and prepared for delivery to the IRD in Montpellier in France, where viral loads are measured and incidence tests are run. You know from these ARVs, I'm back to normal. I've managed to raise my children. You know the time my husband was dying, he left me with a seven-year-old ch child. But I've managed to raise her. Now she's doing driving. I've managed to build a beautiful house. A widow like me. The survey has shown us that it's possible in areas in sub-Saharan Africa with very high prevalence to have a substantial proportion of the population living with HIV, close to 80%, who are on treatment and in good health. The first surprise was obviously the rate of HIV transmission. It was much lower than we anticipated. 
one third of the rate required to stabilize the epidemic. This shows that the epidemic is in the process of being controlled in Malawi's Chiradzulu district. What is really amazing is the quality and extent of the antiretroviral coverage. This is a setting with no biological or viral load monitoring of treatment, and even so, we're seeing incredible virological success rates. This means that MSF's follow-up to treatment package, counseling and everything put in place around treatment compliance, has been a real success. Through the years that MSF has been in Kirazo, evolution has taken place. A lot of fears that people had as far as ARV dispensation and HIV management is concerned, MSF has proved that this can be really handled by the least medically trained people. The results of this survey will also help us when we want to introduce new programs in other settings. We'll be able to demonstrate that decentralization and task shifting strategies are effective, that they achieve very good results for patients in terms of outcomes and treatment compliance. We'll also be able to explain what we seek to achieve, which will facilitate agreements with other partners and health authorities on setting up operations similar to what's been accomplished in Chirazulu. Avec des autres acteurs, de mettre en place des opérations qui sont semblables à ce qu'on a construit à Shiratsulu. Ce qui nous a le plus surpris dans les résultats. The biggest surprise from the results is the proportion of patients within the population receiving treatment. We found that almost three quarters of the population were receiving treatment in an MSF-supported clinic, and two thirds were on antiretroviral therapy and were no longer at risk of transmitting the virus, as they no longer have any virus in their blood. To give you an idea of what that represents, that's twice as high as in the U.S. The objective of the program was to treat people. And, without us realizing, by 2013, the rate of transmission of HIV has become low. This is probably because so many people in the district are no longer at risk of transmitting the virus. There's been a paradigm shift. Antiretroviral therapy doesn't only impact treatment. It now has a proven effect on the actual transmission of the virus. Hey. <laughs>